In this video, we are discussing concepts and dimensions of machine learning. So, learning is equal to improve task T with respect to performance measure P and based on the experience E. So, that is very important. So, we know that in case of machine learning, we are applying artificial intelligence to the computer so that the computer can learn from the data. So, obviously, we should know that what is learning. So, learning is equal to improve task T with respect to performance measure P and based on the experience E. So, as an example, if you go for the spam filtering. So, here T is the respective task. So, identify spam emails. Next one is the P. So, P is actually will be will be denoting the performance measure. So, percentage of spam emails filtered correctly and percentage of non spam emails that were filtered incorrectly that is a false positive. So, that will decide the respective percentage. That means, the percentage of spam emails filtered correctly and percentage of non spam emails that were filtered incorrectly that is a false positive will be denoting the performance measure for this case study. And E, what is the E? E is the, our experience. So, database of email labeled manually by users. So, let us go for another one, a checkers learning problem. So, task is T playing checkers and the performance measure P will be percentage of games won against the opponent and training experience E will be the playing practice games against itself. So, this is another example we have considered here. We can specify many learning problems in this fashion such as learning to recognize handwritten words and learning to drive a robotic automobile autonomously. So, these are the different examples here we have considered two of them but such so many examples we can give right now. So, that is a learning is equal to improve task T with respect to performance measure P and based on the experience E. You should remember this very particular line and statement. Another example is that that is our signature matching. So, T that is a task is our determine if signature belongs to correct person. So, that is a task. So, performance measure, so that is P, percentage of signatures that were correctly matched and percentage of valid signatures that were incorrectly labeled as not matching. Next one is the E, E stands for the experience and database of signatures known to be of that person. So, this is the signature matching, that is another example of this machine learning. So, now we shall discuss what is dimension of learning and what are five dimensions of learning. So, dimensions of learning is nothing but one comprehensive model that uses what researchers and theorists know about the learning to define the learning process. And there are five types of thinking what we call the five dimensions of learning and are essential for a successful learning. So, let us go for the dimension number one that is attitudes and perceptions. So, attitudes and perceptions affect students abilities to learn. For example, if we can find that if students view the classroom as unsafe and disorderly place, then obviously the student will be will not be liking to use that place for their learning process. So, they will learn little there. So, that is known as the attitudes and the perceptions. Let us go for the dimension number two. So, acquire and integrate knowledge. So, when students are learning new information, they must be guided in relating the new knowledge to what they already know and organizing that information and then making it a part of their long term memory. So, whenever the student will be learning, then that learning should get integrated to their previous knowledge. So, that the learning will be having a long term memory in their in their respective brain. So, we are having this one that is our dimension number 3. So, extend and refine knowledge. 
So, learning does not stop with acquiring and integrating knowledges. So, learning cannot stop it will go on acquiring and it will go on integrating the knowledges which will be coming next. So, learners develop, uh, develop in depth understanding through the process of extending and refining their knowledges. Next one we are going for the dimension number 4. So, use knowledge meaningfully. So, the most effective learning occurs when we use the knowledge to perform some meaningful tasks. We might be having different knowledge, but which knowledge has to be applied to one task for the meaningful way that is a great skill. So, for example, we might initially learn about the tennis records by talking to a friend or reading a magazine article about them. Next one we are having the dimension number 5 that is the last dimension that is the habits of mind. The most effective learners have developed powerful habits of mind that enable them to think critically and think creatively and regulate their behavior. So, in this way we have defined what are the different dimensions of learning and there are five different dimensions we have discussed each one of them one by one. Thanks for watching this video.